What up, what up, everybody? Pastor G. Lady T. It's Wednesday. We're excited. We are glad to be here. Extremely, extremely excited. I am glad to be here making a couple of adjustments on my computer. Wow, this is a great day to be alive. I am thankful uh, for, uh, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of the Most High. That's a testimony within itself. I'm a, I'm a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of the Most High God. That's, that, that's the testimony. That's my testimony. I am a child of God. I'm the child of the Most High. Um, that make me, that makes me um, a child of great and incredible potential. That that makes me a child of great and, and incredible potential. That makes me the child of unlimited resources. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes me the, uh, uh, I'm the recipient. I am the, the heir of the one that has unlimited resources. That's what being a child of God, a, a child of the Most High, uh, uh, means. You, you, you are connected. You are connected. We go through this whole life trying to get connected. It's called networking. It's 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 a connection. You have the greatest connection that you or anyone else can have. You are you are a a, a, a an offspring of the Most High God. I I, I want that to marinate in your spirit because. Um, when you really connect, or, really, uh, or when you really comprehend, the the connection is one thing, but the comprehension is the more important part of it. When you comprehend what you are connected to, mm -hmm. that makes you a child of unlimited possibilities. And everyone that is under the sound of my voice, you are connected to unlimited resource because you are a child of the most high God. You are his offspring. You are to inherit his best. You are blessed by the best. And we're going to reiterate that today, that we are truly blessed by the best blesser it is. I like to say it like that. The blessed. You cannot, you are looking for more connection and more uh a network and, and, and all of that. But number one, you have to realize your first connection, your first comprehension must be that I am a child of God. So when I connect to people or resources or things, I always connect with the information that I'm already blessed when I connect. So that uh, uh, within itself does not allow me to compromise in the connection. I can't compromise in my connection because of who I am. And everything, when you really, 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 really know who you are and know whose you are and what you're connected to, here's what you must understand, that everyone that connects to you is blessed because of their connection to you. Very powerful. And I'm thankful for that today. I wanted to jump this lunchtime uplift off with that. Remember who you are and whose you are. you got to always remember that. Thank you, Jonathan. Sonia, first one in the house today, I believe. Yes, mom, thank you so much. Latoria Baron is in the house today. We miss you. Hurry up and get yourself yeah. together. Bring that baby on the yeah. chair. And congratulations. I just said congratulations. congratulations. Is my, it seems like I'm a little blurry. Am I blurry? Okay. Is this the rays of the sun that's coming from? Okay. All right. Latoria, thank you. Jonathan and Sonia, hello. Deborah Donna, what's up, Deborah? That would be right as stuff on there. Oh, ah, yeah. She's Spark, profound. Sparking some things. Yes. In Sheila Butler Parker. What's up, Sheila? Blessings, blessings, blessings to you. Mom is in the house. Thank you so much, Mom. Now, get ready because we're Joe Twala, Pastor Joe Twala Moore is in the house. They got an incredible, incredible ministry. Yeah. Restoring life in West Virginia. You should catch them on Facebook Live. They do Bible study. We're going to have both of them in Arkansas to, to yeah, preach for yeah. us. We're going we're gonna to have them on Lunchtime Uplift, too. Yeah, we're going to do it on lunch. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, Veronica Winfrey, thank you so much. Pastor Gilbert Johns, thank you so much. Priscilla. Priscilla something else. 
that's our newest, uh, one of our newest members, Priscilla Jones, a a a a a, a life spring. Thank yeah. you so much, Priscilla. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Today we're talking about. Uh, listen, connect to, go to my YouTube page really quickly in your own time. Uh, you can go down or you can, well, don't go down because you're going to miss something. Uh, uh, Pastor G at Network of Believers, I just downloaded a video yesterday. I think it's so powerful. Last night, rather. And I'm, a, I'm continuing to download stuff as God downloaded me. I'm giving it, right? This is the season that we need to hear. Look at Jessica just jumped in the house. Girl, Jay with, Dream. With the golden Jay, smile. Jay Green. Yeah. Listen, listen to me. Go connect to my YouTube page. We're the pastors of Network of Believers. We are very proud of that. We thank God for the move that he's allowing us. Hey, 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 people that are, are, are been inspired of God to start something. Listen, do it. Do it. Don't get caught up into uh, the regular way of things having to be done. Uh, they, you got to you gotta do it like this. No, do what God told you to do. And if God has uh, uh, given you the yes and he guides you somewhere, wherever he guides, he provides. You've been held up because you've been waiting on the, the, the default system of supply to come. This is not a default system time. This is a, 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 a different time in God. He's looking for people that have, you know, uh, I've worked in, 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 in the um, entertainment field all my life. Uh, well, most of it anyway. And I, I, I seen a trend in the record industry a few years back. This has been about 15, 20 years now. The trend changed. You know how they used to, uh, a, a record company used to go and find artists, kind of like what, what, what uh, American Idol is trying to do now. They go back and find people and then they take it. This is a whole different picture. Usually the record company will go find artists and sign them because they were good. These days they don't do that any longer. What has to happen is the artist have to build his own or she got to build her own following through social media, through you, all those things and then take an idea to the record company and say look at this and then they say hmm you got something going maybe we'll invest in that but it used to be that they would find you with nothing and just say you got talent and let's make it happen now you got to build the whole picture and take it to them and say look at what i've already built well it's 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 amazing how the secular world it's always up before we get there and now here we are we are still waiting on somebody to find us to give us a start when 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 we must begin to work and then allow allow God to put his super on our natural begin a thing and God will supply your faith is what counts. But faith without works is dead. If you say you believe that God has called, get the work. Get the work. Get Come the on. work. Get the work. Get the work. Create it and watch God bless it. Create it and watch God bless it. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Jeanette Wallace. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Pastor Nolan Brown. I don't know if you're in a Little Rock or Arkansas yet, but hit me up. Now watch this. The name of this uplift is called The Weight. I want to really talk about that because uh, the general consensus, if you talk to people right now that are honest, this waiting period is, for lack of a better, better term, a mess. <laughs> Let's say it like that. This wait thing is a mess sometimes. I, I mean, it's it's overrated. It's overrated. Enough of that already. This waiting, this waiting thing. I, I mean, it's just it's just not ideal. It's not what I would have come up with. I having to wait. Why? When I'm already uh uh as good as everybody in my own mind anyway. Why am I having to wait? Why is God holding up this? Why would he put a a weight clause on me when he knows clearly that I'm ready? Ain't that interesting? And that's what so many are feeling. Uh, we get these emotions, even if we have been in the game a long time, we're, we're still feeling some kind of way, uh, uh, like, man, this is too much. Uh, you know, I, I am getting discouraged because, you know, it, it's, it, to be discouraged and have this, I can't quit mentality of spirit is sometimes very horrible. To get this courage, but you can't quit. 
you know how many people are in the area of I'm discouraged, but I can't quit. So now everything about this calling becomes a drag to me because mm -hmm. I'm discouraged and I can't quit. So life is a drag. Well, I want to I want to say something here that is going to bless you. There is a fresh wind that is about to blow up on your life. Yeah, come There's on. a fresh wind that's about to blow for those that are discouraged, but you can't quit. I've got to do this. I've got to get up and go make the donuts. <laughs> I, I've got to do it. There's a fresh wind that is about to blow. Please hear me. Now, now please do me this favor. Share this. Share this. I forgot to tell you. In case you have it, go share this video because there are people that you are talking to every day is, that are hiding their discouragement because they got a title. Uh, they got this uh, audience, but they're discouraged. Uh, there's an issue with that. Here's the issue. People that are discouraged, that is that are hiding the discouragement, they got an oar that goes off. It's something that will go off onto other people. They don't even know it. They think they're whoo, but really the 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 who they really are and what they're really feeling is ringing out, and they're the only ones that don't know. Here's what I want you to know. Hear me really really well. The weight. There there are some people that are discouraged but they can't quit. That's a drag when I'm discouraged, but I can't quit. I know I can't run from what God has placed up on me, what he's mandated in my life, but I'm discouraged. I just, I just am. And, and, and if you're not careful, what happens? The enemy will beat your head in at these moments. He'll tell you how many times you ought to quit. He'll tell you that your dysfunction, he'll tell you that your attitude is not something that is needed in the body of Christ. He, the, the, the adversary is something else. He'll beat your head in about how horrible you are at this moment and tell you, he'll get very spiritual on you and tell you right now, you just a frustration to the whole function. You might as well go and just eliminate yourself because you know you don't want to hurt people because you got such a good heart. You don't want to, you don't want this all on people. He'll tell you that. And then if you quit, he'll tell you, look how lousy you are for quitting. Ugh. I can't even believe God would even, he's always accusing. I, look, look, God, look, they quit on you again. You, you use it then. How, this is what your adversary does. So many people are feeling this right now because of this word called the wait. I am waiting when I know God told me something, I, I felt like I feel like I'm ready to lunch, but he's causing me to wait. Why is he causing me to wait when I'm ready to lunch? If he will lunch me, this would solve a lot of problems for me and for him. Yes. This would this would solve God's problem as well as my problem. If he would go ahead on and let and now I'm watching other people that uh, uh in my mind have gotten to the place that I thought I was supposed to be and I'm watching them and now I'm upset because they got the opportunity and I know I'm much uh, better than they are. I know I got more than you. You you have no idea. <laughs> Let me tell you, you have no idea what the other person has suffered through, what they've grown through and what they had to sacrifice to get in position. That's just the enemy telling you, look, you are standing, sitting here, stagnant while everybody else is moving past you. Don't fall for that lie. You must know that in these times of struggle, strain, not enough, up days, down days, you have got to, by faith, know that God is still there and he knows the proper time to lunch you out of your situation. He's, God knows, you got to know that he knows. You got to know that all things work together for good. Don't dare get this courage because what you thought should have happened right now didn't happen right now. God knows. God knows that there is a time that is right and conducive that if he lunches you before that time, you're going to start boom, but there's going to be a moment that's going to hit you where you are going to fall off. Please hear me. 
it's more difficult to get back up after you have tasted of it and failed uh, than it is to be in the waiting period and say, until God uh, uh, create the right scenario. That's all it is right now. God is seeing something that you don't see. You think that you are ready. We all the time think that we've got this down. We don't realize that we didn't get all the information. We didn't dot all the right I's and cross all the right T's until we're in the middle and say, I just didn't think about that. Well, this is why God is so merciful and so gracious. He knows that this is not your time of lunch, even though you desire with all you have to desire it with. It is just not your time yet. Please be patient with God. He didn't say that this uh, a delay was a denial. He says this delay is a period that he's still uh, tightening some screws. He's still tightening some things. He's still got some things. He still he still got some things that he's working out. I don't care how long you think you waited. God knows better than you. He does. Trust him in these moments. Trust God in these moments. Let him. He will reassure you if you focus creates blindness. When you're so focused on the delays and the disappointment, it, it really make you blind to the blessings that are already in your life. When you get so focused on lunching, you know, when you get so focused on it's, uh, it's time, it's time, it's time, you really, you really uh, 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 become blind to all the blessings that you already have in your life. Interesting. This is what we do. This is what we do. Now, I want to read a passage of scripture because I got to I got to get you to see this. This is very important in this wait season. It, this is this is a wait season. This is a wait season. God's timing and your timing are two different times. I know you it's been 30 years. I get it. We all experience this. It seems like the people need me right now. I would be good for this time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's in your own perception, in your own mind. God knows more about what he's doing in you than you know about your own self. Even though you've been uh, experienced in this, sometimes we are more experienced than God. We think our experience, uh, God, perhaps he don't know uh, uh, where you are and what you're doing. You, you've been here. You've went through the grind and God uh, don't get it. We get it. All of us are like that sometimes. But here it is, here it is, here it is. The waiting period is difficult, but your delay is not a denial. God is still creating something in you that when he lunches, when he lunches you, when he lunches you, uh, it's going to have an incredible impact on the world. You just got to wait for God's lunching. Don't do it. Don't do it before the time. Thank you, Eva. Uh, thank you so much, Rhonda, uh, Marissa, uh, uh, music, Mr. Music. Thank you so much, Kevin Carter, Lakeisha Palmer, Arthur Devine, your brother now. Hey, big brother. And Katrina Robinson. Now, watch this. Watch this. Here's something that I want to drop into your spirit that is very important for those that are in the wait. In, in Genesis chapter 16, verse number three, I think it is, Genesis 16, Verse number three, I'm sure it is. Now watch this. Um, the scripture says, this is after Abraham has gotten the promise that he would be the father of many nations. Now he's at an old age. He's, he's really technically by all uh, accounts and, 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 and um, biological accounts and, and scientific accounts and all of those things. He's passed his time of producing. Now watch, every time God uh, causes something major to happen in our life or speak something major in our life, it's going to defy all the laws of nature. If it's an incredible exchange, remember, it's going to oppose the general consensus of the time. Uh, probably when God gets ready to do what he has sanctioned in, in you to do, it's so incredible that most will say it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Even you sometimes will say it's impossible. You know, the text says that Sarah, when she heard, when she heard uh, that she was going to be the one that conceived uh, and, and be the mother that will produce a promise, she laughed actually like, this is hilarious <laughs> for, for me to even think that I could uh, actually produce this. 
because it defies all logic. Whenever God produces something, he will defy all of your logic. So you're crying about something that's logical. Your tears are because you logically can't put this thing together. You, you cannot uh, uh, see how God is going to put this. So it makes your heart grow sad because you know the promise, but I don't know how God is going to make it happen. Can't see it. Can't see it happening. Well, that's a normal thought in the natural. In the natural, that's just the way it is. You will never see how God is going to be God. You will never see how God is going to be God. We are, we are never supposed to try to figure out how God is going to be God in our life. We're supposed to uh, be the recipients of God being God, not try to figure out who God is and how he does what he does. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here to stand in faith and allow God to do what God does. It's not a big thing for God, for him to defy all the laws, uh, 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 everything. All, uh, he, can, he can come in and, and when everybody say it's impossible, it's a normal thing for him to say, yes, I can do that. I want to speak to you now. Stay with me now because it's very important. So here it is, Sarah, Genesis 16. This is what I need you, the go-getters, real go-getters. You know, we got go-getters right now that are sad because they've been going and get, and and and, and it ain't happening like uh, um, they want it to happen. See, the enemy knows that you got a go-getter spirit. You're aggressive in your, everything you do, you, you're aggressive. I go after it. But there's a danger in the aggressiveness, especially if you don't understand who God is and what he's doing. Sometimes that becomes your greatest enemy, your aggressiveness. Now, Sarah, uh, chapter uh, uh, 16, verse number three, the, the scripture says, let me, let me read it. I, I'll go find it and read it because I want to be very precise. Uh, Genesis, uh, what did I say, 16? Uh, verse number three. I'm going to show you what Sarah. Now, listen for uh, uh, people that have been delayed, and it seems like your time is almost out. And if if you, God is going to do it, you better start doing it now, or I'm going to start doing it now. I'm going to start getting some things together because I got an aggressive spirit. You know, I'm going to go get a lawyer. All you got to do is point in that direction. I'm <laughs> over there, and I'm going to make some things happen. Be very careful in the make it happen season because God has got you in wait for a reason. Mm -hmm. There's something that he knows right now. You ain't ready. I know I know. you got your business card. You got everything lined out. If God would just give you the okay, he ain't really got to work that hard. He can just, you can just, you, I, I got you, God. Just tell me where to go. Well, hold on just a second, Ranch. Hold on. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Sometimes you can get confused in this aggressive nature. It's harder. I, I used to tell when I used to go out, when I was doing the concerts and things, we take new people out with us, right? And and sometimes I would say, hold on, hold on. I, I get some aggressive. I love the aggressive nature. But uh, when when they take instruction, but if they don't take instruction, they aggressive. They will start plugging up things, and it. I would spend more time unplugging to correct than I would. And I say, hold on. Uh, I love your aggressiveness, but first get the proper direction because uh, it, it it if I think something is put here and it's put over there, that could cause a chaos in the whole program. So I would say, hold on just a second, because sometimes your aggressive nature, and you are aggressive uh, uh, in the secular, in your secular life, that's great to be aggressive. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to start things going because I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. But the enemy will cause you in your sacred life to take the same attitude into your uh, 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 sacredness, and you'll start doing what God wanted to do. And so now you're in a waiting period because God has got, got, got to correct mm -hmm. all of the things that you did in being trying to be aggressive trying to make it happen are you listening to me and it's something about in your uh, uh i'm doing the quotation in your church life once you've uh blew it if you will in their eyes sometimes it's very difficult for them to give you another chance to correct what you do y'all know this so god says i know how these people think so now wait can you wait can you allow me to lunch you at the right time? It, it seems like this is the right time, but you're aggressive, but you're seeing minimal results. Let me lunch. Let me lunch. A delay is not a denial. It's God creating, and he's putting you out at the right time. So here's the danger of the go-getters when they have to wait. I'm going to make it happen because this is what I do. I'm an aggressive, I'm an aggressive spirit. I'll make it happen. Now watch this. Watch this. Uh, Genesis 16, verse number 3. Listen to this. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. It says, and Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. 
So listen, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife, to connect to Mary. Now watch this. Sarah took Hagar, the Egyptian woman. Why did Sarah take Hagar, the Egyptian woman? Because God had promised her that they would have seed that would be as the sands of the uh, as the sands of the sea. God had delayed. Now, notice what text says: they are ten years in Cana. Hmm. Now, Cana is what is called promise. They are ten years in promise, and ain't nothing happened. No. How can I be standing in promise and I don't see no movement? Ooh. I'm in promise, but I don't see no progress. Be very careful when you're standing in promise and you don't see progress that you think God ain't up to something. <laughs> we get it. We, I, my aggressive nature said, if I'm standing in promise, it looks like I'm in a place of promise. I see a lot of promise stuff right here for me, stuff in promise. I need to come up with a plan because yeah. God is, maybe God is saying, uh, you go ahead on and do what you do because I'm in promise. Now, here it is, Sarah takes an Egyptian woman, with Hagar, because she's 10 years in promise, but she don't see no progress. And I know what God promised is God's word, and I know it's supposed to happen. So Sarah begins to think that she is supposed to make it happen. Don't dare get this season confused because you are in a waiting time, in waiting period, and it seems like you're in promise. How, what, what deems it promise? In my mind, what deems promise is when I see people doing what I see, uh, I know God told me to do. And if they seem like they are doing it and they are successful, that means that I should, I'm not aggressive enough. I should be doing, let me come up with a plan. Let me let me come up with a plan. Let me let me boy, it's the time. Time right. Let me jump in with a plan. I need a plan. Let me get a plan. Now, I'm good at getting the plan now. Come on. And so here she is. She gets a plan because she's in promise and it's been 10 years, but she don't see progress. Here it is. So she go get, listen at the Bible, listen at the Bible. Hagar, the Egyptian woman, and takes her and connects her to Abraham and say, produce. Because God did promise that we were gonna have seeds. Here's what the issue is for the aggressive people that are in promise and you don't see no progress and now you think you need to come up with a plan. Sarah connected Abraham to an Egyptian woman. Here's what happens when I get aggressive and I get ahead of God because I've been in the place of promise too long and I don't see progress. I will connect myself and I will create something that eventually will put me in bondage. I will connect to some things. I will create, I create something that eventually, because I didn't wait on God, I thought it was time for God to move. I, I'm on, I got an aggressive plan. I'm going to make this thing happen because God is waiting way too long. Well, maybe God's not waiting. Maybe he's telling me to uh, start something, to do something, to, to really get aggressive about something. When I really un find out that it's because I'm in promise, and I don't see progress, I think I need to start making a, a plan mm. to produce something that eventually will bring me into bondage if I don't really understand that God has told me to wait and the wait period was for a reason. He wanted me to wait until I had gotten uh, over myself. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sarah's in my natural mind, I think if you wait till this long, it's impossible for me to produce because the body would be dead. My natural uh, resources are dead now. And here's what God is saying in, in his, his, his realm. He says, yes, I waited till the body was dead. I waited till you had come to the end of all that you know. I had, I had to wait because I wanted you to know that what was about to be produced was not produced by your flesh. Come on. It was produced by my promise. Yes. And you will know and the world will know that this could only happen through a divine intervention. Now, now, now what are you saying, Pastor? You got to be very careful in this season of wait. You're having to wait, but you want it to be now. I, I, want, I want now. I, I need now. I didn't invest it. I didn't. I, I have a. Uh, I was, I was telling last night about study, very powerful about study. I was, I was talking last night how sometimes you see people um, 
buy a piece of land, piece of property that's got a, 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 a standing building. Building look good, look really wonderful. And the first thing you see is uh, here, here come the bulldozers mm -hmm. into uh, the place, and now they are tearing down. Like 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 here in Little in Rock, Arkansas, yeah. you're watching uh, the seal. What is wrong with that bit? I thought I was supposed to buy that bit. Oh, yeah, that. What are, what are, they messing up? A good thing <laughs> by tearing this thing down. Why would they be? It, it's it's too man. They're spending and wasting a lot of time and resources on tearing down something that looks good. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I don't have detailed instruction or inside sources, mm -hmm. uh, I will always make an assumption. All right. <laughs> I will always assume something because I don't have inside info. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is with God. Uh, we will always make an assumption or make a judgment because God uh, did not see it necessary to give us all the inside details. Mm. And so what when God starts constructing and he starts saying, well, this uh, project is going to take uh, a year to finish. A year? A year? You mean I got to wait? A, really? Why? Because I'm already good. I've already, get, I've already built something. I've already got something built. What is God doing? Well, if uh, there's a requirement to tear down, it is suggesting that there is something there that's not conducive for the future plan. Uh, it looks good. Uh, uh, it had a good run. The building had a good run. Uh, it, it did some great things in its time. But what is going to happen in the future, this does not fit into the future plan. How many times have we gotten in trouble with something that we think we are, and God says, it don't fit into my future plan. I, I know a lot of people say you look good like that. You, you, you done put a lot into that. You, 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 you had some great successes there, mm -hmm. but it don't fit into where I'm taking you. So now I've got to go in and do the process of tearing down. This wait period is not a good, it don't feel good. Because God don't tell us what his future plan is. He says, trust me while I'm tearing you down. <laughs> trust me while I'm reconstructing you. Trust me while I'm, 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 I'm sending in the people that seems like is hurting you. Why are they saying this? Why are they, why, why are they removing this out of my life? Because as long as you got a lifeline, you're gonna stay alive in there. As long as you see this little minimal yeah. results, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get happy because whew, uh, I thought it was I thought it was over, but just in the nick of time, That's just enough moment. to let me live to the mark came in. You know what that is called technically in scripture? That is called manna. Mm. Manna is only good for one day. <laughs> but there's going to come a time when the manna cease. Mm. We don't want the manna to cease. We don't want that manna to cease. But as long as you're living from manna or just enough to make it one day, you are still in the wilderness. <laughs> because when you get in the land of promise, the manna cease. This is why God is trying to tear something down and you are so trying to hold on to the thing that only would yield you minimal results. You want to stay in the wilderness. He said the wilderness time is over, but you don't want the manna to cease. You don't want, you don't want the increments to cease. God is trying to stop the increments. Why? Because he's trying to bring you into your place of promise. It's difficult. This waiting period it's difficult. Now, watch this. It's important that you understand this. You have made major investments in this right here. Listen to me now. You made major investments into this right here. But here's the thing. Here's the problem. And we, we didn't get it because we were not taught. You can make major investments in something that you don't understand, and it'd be just a loss. Mm -hmm. Because you never got what God was saying in the first place. You invested in what everybody else was doing. You thought it was good because everybody else was seeing uh, uh, a, a, a results from the investment. God never said that to you. 
He never, he never told you. You just thought, you know, the go-getter spirit sometimes can be your enemy if you're not hearing the completion of the instruction wow. the, or the specifics of the instruction. Sometimes you are continuing in the chaos because you have invested so much. Sometimes you remain in the relationship because you put so many good years in. And so now you've got to stay to get something out of what you have invested heavily in. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take faith for you to say, uh, I'm going to let that go. And, and to realize or to believe that if I let that go in God's restructure yes, of my life and recreation on, of on. my life, every year that I lost from the canker worm, the plumber, the caterpillar, Jesus. he's going to restore. Door, yes, sir. everything. If I can have the faith enough to say, you know what, that was good, and it was a learning period. It it taught all was not lost. I learned something that perhaps I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't have gone through it. Mm. Stay with me now. This is important. This is important for somebody because this wait period sometimes is the worst period of my life. Why is God starting? I'm bigger than that. I'm, 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 I'm too credentialed for God to tell me no way. What is he? Come on. Don't he know people are watching me? Well, they've been watching you. Here's the thing about the people that are watching you. They have never been the right people to watch. God's got another audience that he's, he's, he's outfitting you for. I know, I know, I know. You wanted to impress them, but God is not interested in impressing them. He's interested in building something, building something. So this wait period becomes uh, a struggle. So here it is. Please, Sarah says, uh, "I've been waiting. I'm old. And if God, God did promise. He said we were gonna do it, babe. So why not make it happen? Come on, come on, Hagar. Let's make this thing happen." It didn't go quite the way we wanted it to, but we did do something. How many times have you reduced yourself to saying, it didn't go quite the way that I had planned or seen, but something did happen? This not That is not your inheritance. That is not your inheritance. If God promised you, if God promised you, he gives you specifics in the promise. If God has specifically told you that this is the way that is going to happen. Here's what you must understand. Anything that comes that don't look like the specifics of God, you cannot receive it into your space. Well, it, I, I, I've been waiting. Seems like what he said ain't coming. So I, I know he wants me to do I need to do No, 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 Sarah. No, Sarah. No, Sarah. Don't you grab a hold. Don't you try to do what only God can do. Don't you say my time is out. Don't you dare say my season is over. No. God says my season began when your season ends. Come on. I can't even begin the work of supernatural until you get past your planning. Hmm. Until you get past what you think is right. You are judging everything by uh, 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 the general consensus of culture. How many times do we judge, oh, they doing that right now, they doing it now, and now it seems like it's time, my time. I, boy, this will be a good time to start. It doesn't mean that it's a God time. Mm -hmm. Remember, I always, I, I'm always reminded of Ecclesiastes 3, verse number one. It says, to, to everything there's a season. Let, can I, can I, let, me, let me read it, because I think, I think it's very powerful and it's applicable. Because because you got people, man, that have been struggling a long time without a, 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 a major intervention in their life. And the enemy is beating you up because he's telling you that you're a failure. <laughs> he's saying, you failed because you told people you were going to do that. Now, look, it ain't happened. And now what we do, we go to the B call. Or we say, you know, my cheering won't do it. That's a that's a that's a cop out option. Ooh, we that's a that's a that's a cop out. Yeah, your children are gonna do great things, but they're gonna exceed you. But you're gonna set the bar real high. Come on. <laughs> you about to set the bar real high. God is not done with you. Yes. Listen to what it says. To everything there is a season. Everything there's a season. 
and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We already have been through this several times. For everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under song. Purpose, season. Listen to the time and season. Listen, everything, there's a season. What is your thing? Have you defined that yet? No, 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 no. no stay with me now. Stay with me now. I'm not saying what they told you your okay. thing was. <laughs> I'm not saying what, what everybody say, this would be good for you. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying what he said, she said, and they said would be good for you. Do you actually know what God created you to be? That's the question you got to answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could be good in what everybody else said. I need, ooh, you would be good for this. You tall. You, 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 you got the build for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's make it happen. But that wasn't what. It's just like, it's just like, it's just like a, a brother being six foot nine. Everybody think you got to be a basketball player. You got to be an athlete. No, no. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I'm an attorney. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm more than that. And that's the way our life has been lived because somebody saw you look like something and say you will be good there. So what do you do? You pursued it. And you spent years with success there. But now you're finding out that that was not fulfilling. I was successful. How many times have you been successful in something but it did not fulfill you? <laughs> When you are in for the long haul, you got to be fulfilled. And this is the season of fulfillment. Now, so now, watch what it said. For everything, there is a season. You got to get the thing before God starts the season. Watch what it said. And a time to every purpose. A time to every purpose. Watch it. A time to every purpose. Not a purpose for the time. That's where we got it messed up. Watch this. Uh, I got a purpose, and I see people doing things in, in a time, and so I better jump in while the timing is right. That's not what Scripture said. Scripture says a time is for the purpose, not a purpose for a time. Hmm. In other words, the time don't start ticking for you until you discover the purpose. God's got a season when you discover the specifics of the purpose in your life. So you have not lost anything. You just need to figure out what God is saying about you. This is where we are. This is what this is what's happening. But this, come on, come on. Lord, I'm tired of waiting. I, I, I need it now. My life is dependent on it. You know, you can spend 10 years talking about your life is dependent on it. If God don't do it now, God knows better than that. And Houston, God is not influenced by your emotion. It's not. He's not influenced by my emotion. I can cry all day. <laughs> He's okay. All right. Okay. Good for you. God's not moved by your emotion. This waiting period, you can cry, you can snot, you can get up and go back down. God says, good, go, go, uh, do it again. But if you're really serious about this plan, uh, uh, sit down and hear my specifics and not be emotional about mm -hmm. it. Then I give you, if you really, if you're really, 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 really ready to make definitive moves, power moves, Sit down and let's talk about this thing. Let's talk about this without the emotion. Let's talk about it because you can talk to someone and you be emotional. You ain't hearing what they're saying. You are still listening, but your emotions are still driving. <laughs> your emotions are still driving. Come on now, stay with me now because this is important. Somebody needs to hear this today. You are in a holding cell. Why? Listen to that. Hold the cell. Hmm. Sometimes the weight feels like a hold the cell. Like I'm in jail. I should be free. Now, who the son said free is free indeed? Why am I in this hold the cell? Wait. Wait. Wait up on the Lord. Wait up on the Lord. Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse number one. Now, watch this. It says, it says, it says, uh, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's Hebrews 12, verse 1. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which do, which do it so 
easily beset us. Watch this, watch this, what it says. And run this race, what? Yes. With patience. patience. Is that an oxymoron? Okay, I'm not running patience. Okay. Well, uh, okay, am I running or am I being patient? Come on. Which one is it? Do I run or do I be patient? That sounds uh, uh, contradictory, Lord. No, no, he says, he says, be set on run, but be patient. When I say go, when I, when I say go take off, be ready to, 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 to run. Always have a runner's mentality, yes. but be yes. patient because I don't want you to run in a direction that I didn't sanction. Now watch this. He says, he says, he says, seeing that we are surpassed about what's over God. In other words, what is he saying? The wait period is a fate period. If you're going to wait, you're going to have to have faith. That's why Abraham was considered the father of faith because he knew how to wait. Because he was old. Now watch this. If you're going to wait, you're going to have to have faith. This is what you must understand. Uh, you are a, 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 a compassed about a circle or there are witnesses that will tell you that if you have faith in God's plan, we witness that it didn't seem like it, but it did happen. Yes, sir. You already got plenty of witnesses that say, if you will wait on the Lord, you'll see supernatural things happen in your life. Go, it says, go back and read. That's what the 11th chapter of Hebrews is saying. Uh, 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 wait, and you're gonna have to wait in faith mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. God is constructing something. It's always in the unusual season or the unlikely time that he produced his greatest work. Yeah. You are in the unusual season in the unusual times of life. And he's saying, wait, 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 wait. Second verse. Second verse of Hebrews. Yeah. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author. The yeah. author is what? The beginner yes, of sir. the work. Mm -hmm. And the finisher. finisher. Author and finisher of our faith yeah you gotta you gotta you got a cloud of witnesses that says you can do this right you can you can you can do it you 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 are able you are more than able to do it but you're gonna have to trust the one that wrote your life and got the power to finish your life <laughs> he wrote the script and now he says i'm gonna execute the script if you got faith enough to wait uh, 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 what is it, Philippians 1, verse number 6. It says, he that hath begun <laughs> a, a great work, a good work in you, is able to perform. Mm. He's speaking to people that's been in the wait, that you're almost to give up. He says, if I wrote it, if I'm the author and I wrote it in your life, I am able to complete what I wrote. I'm able to finish what I have started in you i'm able uh, let me read something let me see something let me read something real quick uh uh, uh zachariah zachariah uh, i've been teaching out of zachariah and I, I love this this book verse number four i mean chapter number four uh what i want to do verse number chapter number four yeah. verse number eight right let's do verse number eight four verse number eight watch this watch this now, this is Zechariah prophesying to Zerubbabel and Joshua because they were sanctioned to do a work. And it seems like the work that they were called of God to do is impossible work. Mm. Uh, everything the critics society said, this is a work that can't happen. And as a matter of fact, why should it happen? Watch this. So, 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 so Zechariah is prophesying to somebody that's been waiting. Here it is. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Now, stay with me because I'm going to unpack that real quick. I said, And laid the foundation. The hands of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Now notice this. This is Zacharias prophesying to a people. He's telling the people. He's telling Zerubbabel. Listen to what he's saying. 
He says, the hands of Zerubbabel shall, watch this, what is it? Shall, uh, 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 it has laid the foundation and the hands shall finish it. Now, why is this interesting? Why is this interesting? And why is this important? Zerubbabel had laid a foundation. This is going to resonate in uh, some of your spirits very heavily and deeply. Watch this. Zerubbabel had laid a foundation, and now it had been 20 years from the day he laid the foundation to him getting this word now. Hmm. Listen, 20 years laying a foundation, and then for 20 years there was no action. 20 years, God had laid the foundation with his hand. How many of you have seen a foundation laid in your life, but there's been a delay? There's been a waiting period. Now the word of the Lord comes to you just like it went, came to, to Zerubbabel through Zacharias. He says, you have laid the foundation and you will finish the work. Philippians 1, 6 again, he that hath begun, a good work in you is able to perform it until the day, watch this, the day, the day, the day. Here's an interesting thing. Now, let me parallel that Philippians 1, 6 with this text. Now, watch this, what the text says. It says, the 10th verse, the 10th verse says, for who hath despised the day of small things? Mm -hmm. Who has despised? I'm asking you, who, those of you that are listening to me, who had despised the day of small things? Now, now, why am I asking you? Because, because, because you laid a foundation, and nothing has happened, and now you despise it what you laid, mm -hmm. because the delay and the wait has been so long, and you're saying, why did I start it? What, what was the God? What was the reason for you even uh, uh, hyping me up? for this, and then now you ain't doing nothing on the behalf of what you promised me. There, there's so many people right now, God has allowed you to lay a foundation, and it has been a long time. Yes. But God is promising. He says, you laid the foundation, and you're going to complete the work. Yes. There's been a delay in your life, but your delay does not mean that I have denied you. It meant that you were not properly ready to complete the project. I've sent you through a period of training to get you ready for this major lunch in this rebuild of your life. Now, here it is. Here it is. It says, who, this is Zechariah chapter 4, and now I'm at verse number 10. It says, for who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel. Now, now I gotta unpack, I gotta unpack, I gotta unpack. Watch this, watch this. Uh, uh, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. <laughs> the plummet, let me deal with that. Now, whenever someone is getting ready to build a major structure or any structure, here's what they have to do. They have to lay a plumb line. <laughs> they have to, they have to, they have to measure it out. Mm -hmm. They have to uh, give an account. They have to count up the cost. Come on. They have to, they have to really look at this because perhaps you were trying to build something that the cost was not counted up on. Mm -hmm. And so I had to delay because you were gonna stick up something that would not be conducive to what I'm trying to put up. Yes. And so you've been through a whole entire season of, 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 of training for your moment. Zerubbabel's case, it took 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now he's getting a prophecy that is hard to process because now I've been waiting 20 years and now uh, I don't even know if I need to get my hopes up for this. <laughs> I don't know if I want to even want to be disappointed again with what God is trying to say. I don't. I, I mean, I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just gonna uh, 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 go with what I got. I'm good, God. But you don't have to even build me up because I don't been through that emotional. Well, He says, "He that has begun a, a, a good work, a great work in you, is able to perform. He's going to come and to perform it." It's interesting that Zerubbabel. Uh, or, or or Zacharias 
is a contemporary of Haggai. Hmm. Hey guy, however you want to uh, uh, call it, he, they are contemporary prophets, and they prophesying uh, at the same time, if you will. Now, uh, uh, Hey guy, chapter two, uh, verse number three. Now, watch. I'm, I'm gonna read that to you as well. Hey guy, chapter uh, two, verse number three. Now, Hey guy is prophesying to Joshua and Zerubbabel too. Mm -hmm. Same time, it says, "Who is left among you that saw this house?" In her first glory. Now watch this. In her first glory. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Interesting. Now, this is what is called rebuild season, right? God is rebuilding your life. And actually, he's causing you to build a structure that he always wanted. Now, now. Now, here's, here's interesting. I'm going to go out with this. So much more to this, but I'm going to go out with this because you're waiting. Now, now watch this. The, the original temple of Solomon that Solomon built in all his glory and splendor had been plundered by an enemy, torn down, in other words. And now God has brought his people to the place of rebuild. I'm going to rebuild. I'm about to do this thing over again. But here, here was the problem. Here was the problem. Uh, Zerubbabel had started the rebuild of the temple. Initially, he started out with looking at what was, and now he's starting something that God is doing now, and he keep looking at what was and comparing to what he's doing now and saying what was is much greater than right now. He's, he's, he's looking and saying, you know, you know, God, uh, David, Solomon's father, left him the materials to build. I don't see the materials for this bill that Solomon had because of David leaving him. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't see that level of resources. Come on now, stay with me. There's some of you right now. God is telling you to build something, and you seem like you are at a disadvantage mm -hmm. because the house that was built before looks like, uh, 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 and you know that the splendor of that house because of the resources, it was something amazing. And now I've been in captivity, and I'm I, I got a lack of resources, and you telling me I'm in the deal or something? Really? I don't see how. Well, you know, in the text, he tells Zerubbabel, he says, it's not by power nor by might, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. He says, as long as you keep looking at where you come from and how glorious it was, you will never be able to focus on what I'm trying to do right now. As long as you keep focusing on what you thought was everything, if it was all that, it wouldn't have been torn down. If it, if it was all that you thought that it was, why is it laying dormant? Why is it, why is it not still in place? I'm the God that's got the power to keep. If I, if I wanted to keep, I would keep. Why is it not in place then? Why are you still looking at what was? And I'm telling you, I'm going to let you build something that is more incredible than what was. Hmm. But you still hurt because you had to wait. You still hurt because you still, oh, that was incredible. You, you, you still think that your, your prior years are where your better years. God is trying to get you to, say, to see now the delay was such for such a time as this. And if you can grab a hold and connect again, I'm going to allow you to build something that that can't even compare to. Mm. While you're trying to say that what you're building can't compare to that. This is this is for people that have been wounded in the weight. This is for people that 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 time has caused your heart to grow sad. And the Lord says, it's been a waiting period, but I have sanctioned, I have committed something unto you that you are going to build. You started on it, you had some disappointments, but he says now is the season that he's coming in and to give the resources right now. He's about to unlit, uh, 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 loose the resources for this rebuild. He's about to loose the things that were needed this, this, the now, now, oh, now, oh, uh, uh, the Lord says interesting things in both of these texts. It says, Who had despised the day of small beginning? He didn't say, Who has despised the days? All right, God had seen all of this period of wait as one day. Wow, <laughs> wow, one day, it ain't been nothing but a day. 
So for those of you that think your best days, he said, oh, this was just one day. Mm. Just one day. You, you, got, you got several. You got other days coming. They, they're coming. They, you're going to, your best days. You got to get over that day to get to your best days. Your best days are, are, are still ahead of you. The resources to do everything I promise you is still available. He's about to do a release if you can get over what was. He's about to do a release if you can get over all the things that, how difficult it's been. Nobody connecting with me. There ain't nobody, I've been trying hard, Lord. Nobody, I'm the, Lord, what are we doing? We, we got a heart of gold. Yes. And now nobody's connect, connecting to us. You know what you're doing? We're acting like Asaph. Mm -hmm. Asaph uh, in uh, Psalm 73, uh, verse number three, Asaph said, I'm watching the foolish and how they are prospering. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I ain't get nothing. And, and other people that ain't even trying to do it like me is it, getting everything. How do they get everything when we can't get nothing? And we're trying to do our life and ministry right. We're trying to do everything God told us, but we ain't get nothing. It, that's easy to get that. Feeling. It, is, it, it is Psalm 73, verse number three. It says, uh, for I was envious at the foolish. This is Asa talking. I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I've been waiting and they've been actually gaining. Watch this fourth verse said, for there are no bands in their depth, but their strength is firm. They ain't even agonizing like me. They, 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 their life is so wonderful. Why my life is full of agony, full of pain, full of like. Watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch it. Fifth verse says, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. <laughs> this is so powerful because that's the posture of so many people that are in the body of Christ. You say, I'm doing all I can do and still seems like it's not possible. God says, don't worry. He's about to show up on your behalf, and then you will know. Notice how he tells uh, 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 Zerubbabel. He says, then you will know that God spoke. How will I know? When you start seeing mm. the resources drop and you complete this work. Don't, don't, don't even sweat. Don't even talk about. Don't even discuss what didn't happen. Have enough faith to say, I'm not discussing that. I just know God promised me, and I'm going to know that this word is truth because he's going to allow me to complete everything that he promised me. And that's where we are right now. That's where we are right now. God is about to release the resources. The 17th verse of this uh, 73 says this. Here's his, his, his uh, Asa. <laughs> Very powerful. 17th verse says, it says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I. See, see, here it is, here it is. Uh, uh, you're about to get a refreshing of God's word again that's going to make you understand everything that you've been through in this prior season. I'm excited about it. The wait, the wait, the wait, the wait. I had to wait. It's been difficult. It's been tough. But when you bring forth this baby, you won't even remember the pain of the wait any longer. That's the only solution to what you've been, the anguish you've been going through. God is going to allow you to complete this work. He's going to allow you to complete it. If you let us not grow weary in well doing, for in due season ye shall reap if you faint not. You cannot faint. The, the rules to reaping is that you don't faint. You cannot faint in this season they that wait upon the lord there is a waiting period david says i had fainted unless i believe had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living in other words here's the rule if you are fainting it's because you have failed to believe to see the goodness of the lord if you're fainting, if you see the goodness of the Lord, as I said last night, faint is not an option. Verse number 14 of Psalm 27 says this, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait. 
I say on the Lord. This is a waiting period, but God has not forgotten about you. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming on your bed. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. We're thanking God for this word. Thank him for the wait period. Thank him for the vision being alive in you. Don't you dare give up on God. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up in this season. The wait is difficult, but don't give up on God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for this word. I thank you for the hearers of this word. I thank you for the fresh wind that is coming for those that have been in wait. Those that have been in a holding cell, you are about to release them and launch them into life. You are doing supernatural things for those that have patiently waited on you. Their season began now. I thank you for the new season, the fresh idea, the fresh wind, the energy and the strategy to make it happen, to maximize their God moment. Thank you for it. I appreciate you for being the God of our salvation. You have never failed, neither will you begin now. You are beginning a great work right now. The resources are coming right now. Thank you for the divine connections that are happening right now. Thank you for the phone calls of intervention. Thank you for the exchanges of intervention. Lord, allow us not to take for granted one exchange. Let us live in expectancy that everything we touch is a tool of yours to catapult us into our position. So we thank you through faith. We hear through faith and we walk in that faith. Again, name the praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. New season, fresh wind. Believe God because it's happening. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Sometimes the only thing you need to tell yourself is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Don't you let the enemy talk you out of this happening. You got to believe to see the goodness of the Lord right now in your land to live. All right. Thank you so much today. I'm excited about this word. Wonderful word, word Pastor. Yes, this is a beautiful, uh, we left the script. But we still uh, stayed with the weight. Yeah, we still stayed with the weight, though. Thank God. So many it. different ways to get there. Yes. Just wait. Just wait. Just be patient with God. This is your season and the time for it to happen. Now, I have this uploaded here in just a few moments. You can go and uh, listen to it again. That, that's at my YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believe it. Subscribe to it. I put a video in there last night. You go go look and watch the video from last night. I put an excerpt from the Bible study last night, which was powerful. Man, that was a powerful Bible study last night. Thank God for his word being uh, uh, strong and the instructions of God being there. So go check that out tomorrow. Uh, I mean, tonight, today. I'm about to have this in. Subscribe to it. Every time I do a video, it's going to bloop. It'll pop up and, and your phone will tell you, Pastor G. Just uploaded a video. You need to go check it out. Thank you guys so much. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. All right. Is that it? Thank you guys so much for being in the house. Thank you, uh, uh, Pastor Marissa. Thank you for being in the house. Uh, G. Williams, thank you so much. Pastor Nolan, Pastor Diga, Latoya, thank you so much. Priscilla, thank you so much. Uh, Charlotte, well, thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Joe Tallamore, thank you so much. Let me highlight this. This young lady uh, just gifted us while she's listening, Pastor Joe Tallamore. Thank you for your seed that you sowed, uh, uh, Pastor. We, we, let's pray with that seed right now. Father, we ask right now that you will restore to the family of the Moors and restoring life for their seed, 1,000 fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. See, thank you for that. Uh, thank mom, uh, uh, prophet Deborah Donald. Thank you so much. John Spears, Derek Anderson, Evangelist Lisa Withers, Danita mm -hmm. Epson. Hey, Danita, I love Danita. Yeah, Rapunzel Brown, yeah, uh, uh, Donna Lindsay, Lindsay Pastor. Robinson, Pastor yes. Donna Lindsay Robinson. Thank you so much, Pastor Angela. Yeah, thank you so much. They made it back at the house, Sharice Patton. Thank you so much, Sharice, Amanda, Catrice, Unes, 
Mm-hmm. An S is the best. Mm-hmm. An S is the best. Dar, our Fort Smith liaison. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Salento Lewis, Michelle Cox, and our big sister Leah. That's as far as letting me go up. Thank you guys so much. We always appreciate you guys for everything. Thank you, Kimberly Wyatt Clark. White Clark. White. Why mm-hmm. I say white? I say That's white. Why I say white? Thank you, Kim. James Abstin. James Abstin. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, Kimberly. Blessings to you and Lee. Thank you. All right. You done? John Spears. Thank you, John. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. All right. We are out of here. Have a blessed day. You deserve it. You deserve it. The wait is difficult, but God has promised. So in the wait, just just uh, allow God to finish what he says. He knows when the right time to lunch. When you lunch and when God allows you to come out, man, he gives you enough in fulfillment that you forget the period of wait. The day. The day of wait. The day of wait. Okay. I corrected him, Kimberly. I told him white. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so... <laughs> All right then, White. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. We are out of here. Go back and listen to this on YouTube. Pastor G at Network Complete on YouTube page. Watch it again. It'll bless your soul. Holla! You done? Yes. You can throw the peace sign. Oh, you don't throw the peace sign on. All right, gotcha. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>